Sean Lapel from Beauty in the Brush Artistic Designs, and I am going to share with you today um, how I apply a transfer. This transfer is called the Flower Fields. It's redesigned by Prima. You can order it on Etsy. There's other retailers. I don't supply this here at the store, but these are what I use. And I am going to adhere it to a lampshade that I purchased to go on top of my little frog lamp. And this is a piece that I'll probably keep for myself. I found the frog lamp at Goodwill and was able to eventually find a lampshade that fits nicely on it. And it doesn't have the hard plastic underneath, so the light will shine through nicely. And so I wanted to make the lampshade a little bit more attractive than just the light beigey brown color that it is. And so I ordered the transfer with lots of flowers. And what I'm going to do is have those wrap around the lampshade like the flowers are growing up from the bottom to the top there. And then when we place it on, it'll have lots of pretty, pretty flowers on top of it and not just be so drab and brown. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is select the flowers that I'd like to put on there. I've already kind of started on one side, so I already know where I really need to cut. And I'm doing it in sections so I can work on smaller sections at a time. So I'm gonna cut the next section that I want. And it doesn't matter if I'm cutting up the flowers. You don't have to cut around them. See, I kind of cut into the yellow, cut it right off the edge, because what I'm going to do is match it up. So when it goes around, you're not gonna be able to tell. Right, cut the flower off. Um, transfers have a protective sheet that the film comes on when it's shipped to you and it keeps the picture that is on the back of the transfer from adhering to anything that you do not want to adhere to and then coming off because that will happen. I'm going to apply it here so give me just a minute so I can get it all lined up nice and neat. Part of the hardest part when you're putting transfers together, to be completely honest with you, is matching it up. Because it needs to look natural. You don't want it to look like it's obviously just been pieced together. So it's important to kind of take your time and line it up way that it needs to go. So when you're finished with it, it appears to look like one big picture. And this is looking pretty good where it's at here. It's gonna overlap just a little bit, which is fine, because it looks more natural that way anyway. So once you get it lined up to where you feel you're satisfied, with it matching, or if you're laying it down for the first time, then you just need to give a light press to it, whatever surface that you're putting it on. Most times I am putting it on furniture. Today I am putting it on a lampshade. The lampshade's a little bit trickier to work with because it's curved and not a hard flat surface. So I have to be careful make sure that it lays just right and attaches. And then I have a tool. It's just a little wooden like popsicle stick. It comes with the transfer to rub on it. I'm gonna put a flat surface underneath so I'm not like bubbling the lampshade out. And then you just rub it on. It will take some time. Some surfaces are easier to rub it onto than others. When doing furniture, painted in chalk paint, you always should use a top coat 
before you apply any transfer. Reason being is chalk paint is a flat matte finish. It doesn't really have anything for the transfer to grab onto. And when you seal it with a top coat, it gives it more of a satin or semi-gloss finish. And the transfers like to stick to it a lot better. You can get it on chalk paint. They will adhere, but you're gonna be rubbing for a lot longer of time. Then if you just simply put a top coat on, wait 24 hours for it to completely dry, and then go back and rub the transfer on. So I'm kind of starting in the middle because since this lampshade is curved, I'm going to have to make slits in it with the scissors the transfer. That way it doesn't pull when I start going over the edges and the bumps of the wires of the lampshade. And I want it to flow all around so it looks seamless. So it kind of relieves the tension of adhering to the surfaces that it is so it doesn't pull keep it from bending. So just make a slit here, slit here, and you can see, but doing the slits, one more. It will easily go over that lump on the lampshade there. Whereas before it would have been straight and it would have tried to wrinkle as it went across. But because I put those slits in there, it will now go over it and lie flat. And again, I'm lightly pressing down so I can make sure my transfer lays where I want it to go. And then I'm rubbing with the tool. As you rub on these transfers, you'll see um, what looks like it develops a cloudy spot to it. And what that is, is it's the actual picture releasing from the paper, so that's a good thing. That's what you're actually looking for. Um, you can check and see if it's starting to adhere by lifting up an edge of your transfer paper. And if it starts to lift, then it hasn't adhered fully. And you can lay it right back down and keep rubbing until it sticks more properly where you want it to go. And here on this metal, I'm going to take my fingers and rub right down the edge here. It's kind of like a speed bump. And I want it to flow across. So I'm making sure that it sticks on both sides. I'm gonna check and see. This is almost adhered. This lampshade's really soft. So on some of it, I'm kind of just using my finger to push on it. But what I was nervous about is it is soft. So I was keeping something flat underneath. So I don't rub the snot out of it and like cause a bunch of bubbles on the lamp. Or you can tell that I rubbed to adhere the transfer. Okay, this lampshade obviously did not have anything on it before I started as far as the top coat. Um, I'm not sure what it's actually made out of. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, it's not fabric. It's not leather. It's not plastic. I'm not, I'm not sure what it is, but it is making the transfer a little bit harder to rub onto the lamp for it to stick and that's fine. Just have to be patient. It will go on and it will be rewarding. Now, when you do it on furniture, something that you put a top coat on, it's suggested that you wait 24 hours before applying transfers. And the reason for that is because you want them to stick. And when you go to lift 
your paper away if your paint has not fully dried and it'll feel dry to the touch that doesn't mean it's dry underneath but if your paint has not fully dried and you try to rub a transfer on it when you go to pull it away it's not only going to pull up your transfer but it's going to pull up the layer of paint that you had painted down so you can see here where these three pieces are now free it's been rubbed on and it's now in the lampshade and what i'm going to do is just continue working my way around and rubbing it on there until it all transfers on it gives us that beautiful picture of all the flowers that the frog will then be wearing on its head. It'll be much more attractive looking than just a brown lampshade. At least I think so. But I love color. Not that you can't tell that by my furniture painting. I just think color makes everything more attractive. Bright colors. I'm not fond of winter either. I don't like the cold and it's dreary. And I feel that I find myself getting in a depressive episode in winter. So when spring finally rolls around, I am so, so happy for that because I do not like dreary. There's no color. And then spring comes along and the flowers are blooming and the birds are out. You can go back outside without freezing to death. I turn into a hermit in the winter. I don't like to go out unless I absolutely have to. So I'm gonna check and see how this is going now. See so how it's lifting here, and the picture is not coming with it, which is a good thing. So I just gotta keep rubbing. I'm gonna put my hand back here because I'm close to the edge, and that way I have more control over where I'm rubbing. I'm literally rubbing right up along where the other transfer is, where they meet. And I want to be able to pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't accidentally rub part of the transfer that's already on there off by going over that edge and scratching over the transfer that's there. see or not but you can kind of see where it's like you can see through the paper just in a couple spots that's what you're wanting to see that means that the image underneath has stuck and there's a couple pieces on here that are not like that so I know not to lift it up because it's just going to lift the image with it this surface so I'm once again going to have to put some cuts for like release release points in the plastic paper to relieve some of the tension so it will nicely go along over here where it's already stuck I can cut this off it's no longer needed and that'll help Transfers seem like they would probably be pretty simple, and I'm not saying that it doesn't take, that it takes artistic skill 
to rub something from a sheet of paper onto an object. But these transfers come in sheets and they're pictures. They're already pre-laid out for you. And you can use them just like they come in the tube and transfer them right onto your piece of furniture or whatever it is that you're wanting to embellish the surface. But the artistic creation part comes when you can coordinate them with other transfers, layer them, mix and match, and cut them so they're not just one big sticker image just slapped on the front of something. Now there are some transfers out there that are made specifically where it is supposed to be one big scene. And that's different. That doesn't mean that has to be the only thing that you put on your furniture either. You don't have to have just this big scene going across your furniture of a transfer and that's all. That's why I like to add stripes or other designs. I like to accent with metallics such as gold and silver. Gives it a little bit more depth. And makes it a little bit more artistic. I can hand paint, but I'm not confident enough in myself at this point to hand paint on furniture. Why? Honestly, because if I mess up, I'm gonna have to repaint it all. <laughs> and painting furniture takes quite a bit of time. A lot of people don't understand what's involved. But as I said before, my class that I'm offering, the workshop, I'm teaching people how to prepare your piece of furniture or your item to even get it in the stages of being able to be painted. A lot of people think you can just wipe it down and slap some paint on and call it a day. That's not, that's not how it goes. There's a lot of prepping involved. You need to clean your piece. You have to prime it. Of course, you have to remove the hardware. You have to make any kind of repairs that are needed. Sometimes there's gouges, scratches, nicks, missing pieces of wood from raised parts. If your piece of furniture has raised parts, um, you can actually replace those by making a mold out of ear dry clay. That's for another day. So, now right on the edge, there's some of the leaf that's not going to fit and that's fine because it looks more natural that way. And I'm not gonna roll it around to the underneath side because flower stems don't just roll underneath. Uh, when you cut a flower, it's just kind of laying loosely, the stem. And these aren't made to look like they're necessarily growing straight from the dirt. That's why there's no ground on this picture. But it is coming along rather nicely. by rubbing it. And now I'm coming up to this edge here. And I want it to flow over nicely. So I'm going to go back with my hand and pinch on this wire and kind of rub back and forth with my fingernail to make sure that it glides over so it can still be seamless scene of flowers. I will tell you, there's a piece that I did 
on a buffet. And it was one of those real big ones that I was telling you about. It was, it's a whole scene. It's called Earthly Delights. And it's a beautiful transfer. But the front of this buffet had three doors and two drawers and they had the raised edging kind of like picture frame with, on the front of the drawer and it was like this part on the lamp where it was going to roll over i'm not even kidding y'all took me six hours just to put that transfer on six hours i think i literally had a margarita after i got it on i was so excited my arms hurt the next day from rubbing so much. My back hurt. I don't, I don't even think I worked the next day. I was just so, so glad to be done with that transfer. So I don't really look forward to doing another large one like that. And if, when I'm saying large, I'm talking, it was like four feet wide and three feet tall. And if it was just a flat surface, that probably would have been thousand times easier but I don't do anything easy I always like to have things that are challenging otherwise things just get boring but I had no idea it was gonna take me six hours I will tell you that I don't know that I ever really want to challenge myself in that way again okay so I'm near the edge and this is where I cut right up the middle of the yellow flowers so I'm going to gently take my hand and my fingernail so it goes over this wire and flows across like I'm wanting it to. I'm trying to be careful because I don't want to bump it and then it rips off and doesn't leave the image on the lampshade. Okay, so this is where I started. I had already put that on. And then this is the piece that I had cut and just transferred onto the lampshade. And if you can see, this is where I obviously cut it loose from this piece. And what I will do is continue cutting sections and I will line it up so it meets with these flowers and work my way around the lamp. And then when it's finished, little froggy. He'll have a garden on his head. It's a garden party. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you in my shop. Come by and see me. Come check out the new stuff that I have. And have a great night. Thanks.